All right now. Been a while since we talked strategy. We're about to go over and break down things that happen in nearly every encounter in this game. This is what I call the Borders Paradox. A huge amount of encounters unfold the way this one just did, and we will come back to this clip later in the third segment. This video is about the mathematics of all the most common scenarios involving combat. Now an angling galleon with its sails up, anchor up, is the most powerful defensive posture that a ship can have in the game. I am about to do what you should never in any circumstance do unless you just have no loot on your boat and you don't care. Because I'm going to sail right at these people. A sloop can have all the agility it wants, all the simplicity of its controls, but a galleon with a captain who is making sure to keep you in his kill zone, you are going to get lit up. Now I've raised my sail. Why? Probably because I'm an idiot. The whole point of this maneuver was to get my teammate as close as possible so we could keg them. Now miraculously, after taking about 20 shots there, I lived. Do I want to do that ever again? No, I don't. Now, Dubs probably, probably kegged them. This is an older clip. But the point is, when you do run into an angling galleon, it's not worth it to drive at them. You should take it as a compliment that you harassed them enough that they had to take the King Kong end all be all defensive posture against you. And what you really should do if an alien gangles gangle, see what am I what am I even talking about? And if a if a galleon does angle on you, your best bet is to uh to just do this. Drain them. Just drain them of cannonballs. And once you see them stop taking long range shots you know that they're being mindful of of their supplies and then if you just sail away from them I guarantee they'll drop their sails and then you can go start harassing them again and not all angling galleons are created equally this captain is a mess he's not keeping us in his kill zone and that's just to show you there is a difference between a competent captain who is making sure to keep the enemy ship in the kill zone. Now I think that's that's everything for the defensive posturing galleon segment of the video. Moving on. Now this next part of the video is about snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Don't lose after you've sealed the deal on your victory. I'm about to do what you probably shouldn't do. I make mistakes. You never want to sail underneath a galleon's bow. You do want to attack them from the other side of their boat. But it just kind of played out the way it did. This guy runs on my boat with the keg. I almost get clipped off the boat by the bow. The guy's downstairs. Sets off a keg. Comes up top and challenges me. This guy just went from having wrecking Sneakler on his resume to to his boat being sunk. If you set off a keg in somebody's basement, defend the holes. I have to come down there and fight you. You don't even have to kill me. When I come down there to fight you, all you have to do is escape and get to the top deck and keep annoying me. You don't even have to kill me. And it's this, these are the type of mistakes that battles are won and lost. We, we should be sunk right now. He, he had a 90% chance of winning that scenario and look who lost. My teammate went to their boat and won. You came to my boat, should have won and lost. Moving on. 
This is back to the intro. I'm gonna try and explain this as best I can. Sometimes the clips go by too fast and I can't say everything I want to say, but those two players right there, what do they represent? That is their two mercenaries, their two aggressive players. Who is left on the boat right now? Their captain and their bilge rat. And I'm not insulting the bilge rat. The bilge rat is the repairman. The repairman is the most important player on the ship in a galleon crew, but at the same time, the captain and the repairman are the most the two most inexperienced PvPers. That doesn't mean they suck. Me and Dubs, me and Dubs might be equal skill level, but Dubs is usually our mercenary. I'm usually driving the boat, so he has more experience than me. Captains have the least combat experience in most scenarios, not all scenarios. So, you know, this is something that you need to keep in mind. When you send your two best PvPers to kill me, or kill the other boat, you're leaving your two most experienced, or your two most inexperienced players to fight the other team's most experienced players. And that's something you need to consider. Now this is the reverse of what I just said. There's our second player. We're fighting another ship, we fired a player over. You know, 10 seconds earlier we had shot another player over. But the difference is, this ship didn't send any players. So even though my crew is over there fighting a two versus four, with two of us here, two, two on the home team, two on the away team, they're applying no pressure to us. Their anchor is down. Sure, I could go over there and possibly seal the deal on the fight, but why, in case they did somehow sneak a player off or someone swim into our boat that, with a keg that we don't know about, it's not worth the risk of leaving your captain by himself to fight now that crew this was not some experienced crew we were fighting against I just wanted you guys to see the reverse scenario of of us sending two boarders just like those that other ship sent two boarders at me and uh the whole boarders paradox and understanding that if you're fighting another ship and you're leaving your you know your weakest player versus player users on your boat in a ship to ship battle you could be signing yourself up for disaster because the last thing you want is for uh, somebody with low PvP skill to be having to fight against the other ships best PvPers and uh, I know this was a short episode but these these are important things that people need to think about when you're battling other ships.